that are going to come in. Um, there are a couple of announcements I need to make. Um, we were supposed to have a, uh, a team leaders meeting in breakfast on Saturday. Um, we're going to have to move that to Sunday. Um, I am the reason we're having to move it because we're having to move my mom into a, an assisted living facility on Saturday, and I'm going to have to be there to help them do that. So Sunday morning after service, we want to meet with our team leaders in the in the back. We're going to we're going to provide lunch. And so if, if you can be here, please be here. Let us uh, know if you cannot. Um, but we really would like for you to be here um, so that we can get this done. Um, and so if you are a team leader, um, if you're over 18, please uh, be here Sunday after service. I know it's late announcement. It's Wednesday. We were supposed to have it on Saturday. But I just found out we've been trying to get our mom into a uh, assisted living facility for uh, some time and it just came up that they had an opening and so I got a notice yesterday can you be here Saturday I was like um, yeah <laughs> sure I can be there um, so just uh, I apologize for the the late notice of that but um, thank you for your understanding and uh, be here Sunday we will try not to hold you too long we're, shoot, we're shooting for trying to be eating around between 12.30 and 1 back there and be out of here by 2. So um, if you can come and stay, we would greatly appreciate it. And uh, it will help us move forward in our uh, meetings, our team moving forward in, in the team uh, process. And so I, with that in mind, there's some people I need to talk to. So if I call your name... I would really like to um, talk to you after service tonight. Some of you are worried. Um, uh, Ann Brooks, Marvin Brooks, um, David Perkins and Carolyn Perkins. Uh, I'm looking at people who are here. Cassie and Jeff. Um, if I could just see you after service, just right down the front just for a minute. Um, and seeing if anybody else on this list is in here. I don't see them, so we'll go with what we have. If I called your name, if you could just come down here um, immediately following service, I just want to talk to you for a few minutes, uh, probably less than a few minutes, but I just want to kind of share um, something we're doing. Um, Miss Penny, if you could stay as well, um, I'd really appreciate that. So turn, if you heard your name, turn to somebody there close to you and say, don't be nervous and don't worry because it's nothing bad. <laughs> it's not bad. Um, we're just, we're, we're, we've seen some areas in our places that we do things that we we're trying to, I don't want to say fix or make better, but, you know, we made adjustments with this whole pandemic and we're still kind of fluidly moving through adjusting some areas. And so... Um, if you could be here after, I will just take just a few moments with you. Um, prayer requests. I have the, the male, Mahale family, uh, Marvin, your sister, Diane, um, uh, Sister Bob, Bobbick. She is not here today, but please remember her. Uh, Sherry, her husband, um, took his own life. Holly and her daughter, COVID, Kelly, COVID and pneumonia, and Roger, COVID, um, a woman named Catherine, Jan and Raymond Harris, Michael and his wife, Jamie, and Evelyn. Um, are there any others that anyone would like to bring forth? Yes, Jeff. Oh, no. We will certainly be praying for Edna and her family. Anyone else? Yes. Okay. Oh, praise God. Okay. Is there another one over here? Yes. Okay. 
Any other prayer requests? Yes, Ms. Connor. Is that Roger? Okay. Any other prayer requests? a long time. Yes. Yes, we will certainly pray for brother and sister Roe. They're relocating to San Antonio. Have you got a place? Okay. So they are, when is your projected moving date? October 19th. Okay. Well, we will certainly be in prayer for you and Sister Barbara as you make that transition. Any other prayer requests? I'm going to ask you to stand. We're going to go to the Lord and pray over these requests. If you have any tithe or offering after we pray, you can bring it forward. Any undesignated, as this is the fourth or is this the fifth? Fifth. We didn't designate. We did first and third and second, fourth. So it... It will go to general fund. <laughs> okay. Uh, Father God, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. And we thank you for your word and for your truth and your faithfulness, God. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that you would just uh, touch and minister, Lord, to the needs that are here, Father. Lord, we thank you, God, Lord, for all that you have done and all that you are doing in our midst. And we just come to you, God, asking that you minister to these who are sick, these who are hurting, God, these who are struggling and suffering, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Those who are hurting from loss of family members, Father, Lord, for this woman who's lost her, her, her teenage son, Father. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, you know, you are aware, God, of all these situations, God. Lord, we know that we have hope in you, Father. We know that you, God, bring healing and strength and and uh, you, you touch us and, and we are able to move forward, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we just give you the glory, the honor, and the praise that we, we know you hear and that you will answer, Father. And we give you praise and glory in Jesus' holy name. Amen. And amen. Again, if you have tithe or offering, you can come at this time and uh, bring those here, the three things the Lord laid on my heart today, uh, or over the last few days, uh, to pray uh, in our prayer before we get into the Word. Um, the first thing that the, the, the really the Lord laid on my heart was to pray for boldness. I believe we're living in a time where the en enemy is very bold. Amen. He's doing what he wants to do. He doesn't care what people or anybody thinks. He's not afraid of the church, so much so. And you might say, well, how, how can you say that? Because he's doing whatever he wants to do. And uh, without fear of retribution, I'm going to tell you something. The church needs to arise in boldness and speak forth the word of the Lord. Amen. In truth, in love, but with boldness. And so the first thing we're going to pray for is boldness. And I'm going to ask you to join me in, in, uh, as we pray a prayer of agreement that we would walk in boldness. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we just come to you, Father, and we just exalt you. We thank you for all that you are and all that you have done, Father. Lord, I pray, God, for a boldness, a holy boldness upon your church. Not just this church body, but God, the body of believers ac across this nation and around this world. Lord, to speak with boldness as the disciples did in the book of Acts. Lord God, not to con take into consideration whether we should obey the, you or obey what man says. God, let us obey what you say and let us speak with boldness your word of truth, your word of hope, your word of strength in the name of Jesus Christ. God, let us not be ashamed of the gospel, 
But Lord, let us stand up because we know it is the power of God unto righteousness. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that a holy boldness would come upon the church. God, this body of believers and every Bible-based body of believers, God, that is, that is in existence, Lord, to begin to proclaim the truth of your word, God. Lord, to a, to a world that is hurting, that, that is in need of truth, God, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, God, that we would not hold our tongue in speaking truth in love, Father. We would speak forth according to your word in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, would you lift your hands and say, Lord, thank you for that boldness, that spirit of boldness in the name of Jesus to stand for what we are supposed to stand for in Jesus' name, to speak forth what we are supposed to speak forth in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The second thing the Lord uh, laid on my heart, and this is not a new one, but it is one that we need to pray, and I talked about this a little bit last Wednesday, and he mentioned it Sunday. We need to pray the Lord of the harvest. That's an instruction from Jesus Christ, to pray the Lord of the harvest would send forth laborers into the harvest because the fields are wide unto harvest. And the harvest is great and the laborers are few. And so I want you to join with me right now as we ask the Lord to send forth laborers. And when we ask that, we need to be prepared to answer the call to that as well. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come to you, the Lord of the harvest. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ that you would send forth laborers into the harvest, Father. Lord, to reap this last day a harvest unto your kingdom God Lord we pray in the name of Jesus Christ Father Lord that you would send forth laborers God from every age group Lord every uh, social economic background every race every creed every color Lord to reach out into the harvest Lord in the fields that you have planted them in Jesus name God, to reap in this last day harvest, God, for your kingdom, for your purpose, for your glory, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, if we'll move in boldness, you'll give us a harvest. Lord, if we won't be afraid, you will give us a harvest, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we just simply need to put in the, the, the sickle and begin to harvest the lives uh, of sinners who need Jesus Christ. Lord, let your spirit pour out upon us that boldness for the harvest in the name of Jesus, God, that we might glorify and honor you in Jesus' name that you, through the fruit that we bear unto you. We give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Now I want you to lift your hands and say, Lord, I thank you for my harvest. Lord, I thank you for the souls you're going to help me lead to you. I thank you, God, for those you're going to put in my path you're going to put in my way, Lord, to, to lead them to the cross of Jesus Christ, to know you. <coughs> in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That excites me. Amen. That excites me to, to, to be prepared to go into the harvest. The last thing that uh, we're going to pray for. The Lord really has, has been laying this on my heart actually for a week or two. But I feel like now is when we need to, and we've individually, maybe you've already been praying this, but the Lord said, I want you to pray for your leaders. And I said, Lord, our, our denominational leaders, our spiritual leaders, he said, no, I want you to pray for the secular leaders. And I said, Lord, I said, now I pray for those who are over us in the government. The Bible tells me to do that. But why are you telling me to have the church pray for them now? And this is what came to my spirit. There is a judgment, not only on the sinners, but on the nations that forget God. Now, can I tell you, in order for you to forget God, you've had to know Him. And the United States of America is a nation that is quickly forgetting who God is. And we're very quickly coming under the judgment, if we're not already there, of God Almighty. And we need to pray for our leaders. We need to pray for them. What we're going to do is we're going to pray for them to repent. We're going to pray for them. I don't care whether they're Democrat 
Republican, independent. I don't care if they're what, what, what their uh, religious affiliation is. The Bible says that God sets them up and pulls them down. Amen. All right? And so we're going to pray for them. Every one of them. Even the ones we don't like. Especially for the ones we don't like. And I'm going to tell you, there are some up there I don't like because they stand in exact opposition to the things of God. But what we need to do is pray, God, let your Holy Spirit move on them. Move on them in the name of Jesus Christ. So we're going to pray for our leaders. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, God, we come to you as a people, as a nation. Lord, we represent a cross-section of our nation. And Father, God, I pray for our leaders who govern us and are supposed to guide us. Lord, I pray, Father, that they would guide us with righteous guidance and governance. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over our nation's capital. God, that you would turn their hearts to you, that we would not be counted as a nation that has forgotten who you are. Lord God, forgive us as a nation for our sin and our wickedness and our unrighteousness. Lord, turn our leaders, turn our people to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, that we would be found standing for the things that you will bless and honor, Father, because we worship you and we love you and we honor you, God, and that we don't forget Israel. God, that we stand by your people, your chosen people, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that you would turn the hearts of our president and Congress and the Senate and the Supreme Court, not to what I will and desire, but what you will and desire according to your word and your truth, God. Lord, by your power and your spirit, I pray for this nation. We pray in agreement for this nation. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God, that we would once again turn to you and cry out to you as a nation and a people. I pray for our leaders, God, to take a stance for truth and righteousness in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' holy name. And the church said, Amen. Now I'm going to ask you to do something that might be hard, but I'm going to ask you to thank God for your leaders. Because we believe God's going to touch them. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for the leaders that you have placed over us. I don't understand why they're there, God, and doing what they're doing. But all authority comes from you, God, and I recognize that. And I submit to that. And Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you hear our prayer for our leaders and for our nation and for our people, God. And Lord God, I believe and I pray that you would turn the hearts of the leaders and this nation back to you in Jesus holy name in Jesus name and the church said amen and amen praise God amen God is so good amen and we're still talking about prayer and um, I you know I, I first I was going to uh, walk through uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then look for other things to pray about. And as I was just beginning to talk to the Lord uh, earlier in the week, He laid this on my heart. I said, "Lord, I, I, we've already been over this. You ever told God that we've already been over this? <laughs> uh, we, we, they're going to think I'm repeating myself that I just gotten so old that I just repeat myself and don't know it. But I know that I preached on this and along this." in the last few months but the holy spirit said you need to preach this you need to speak this and so it's from a little bit of a different perspective but it's the same place as we did when we we started back a, a month or so ago a couple of months ago matthew chapter 6 verses 5 through 15 and we've talked about this somewhat um and but we're gonna we're gonna talk about prayer for kingdom living i haven't actually preached specifically on this um here matthew chapter 6 5 verse 5 says and when you pray everybody say when you pray pray. i did that before you say that because when i I like to point out that jesus doesn't give you an option of whether or not you're going to pray he says when you pray what he's saying is you're going to pray you need to pray you ought to be praying so when you pray 
And so he's given us this instruction. When you pray, you'll not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, and that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, everybody say, when you pray. When you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, say it again, and when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Have you ever felt like if you just keep talking that you'd, you'd move people to your direction? I don't always work because most of the time in human nature, you keep talking. They just turn you off. They look at you, but they're not listening. So uh, we're told not to pray this way, for they think there will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your father knows the things you have need of before you ask. And then he says, in this manner, therefore, pray. Our father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Would you bow your heads as we ask him to bless this class today? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you and we praise you. And Lord, we just pray, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you would open our hearts and ears to hear what you're specifically trying to speak to us today. And I pray, God, that we would hear and receive that. And Lord, that we would not just be stirred, but we would be changed by the power of your spirit and your word. We give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. And the church said, amen. amen. So um, the prayer for kingdom living. We've talked about kingdom living. I've talked about praying and living in kingdom dominion and those types of things. And I'll, I will keep, as long as I'm your pastor, keep praying, pe- preaching that and teaching that because I don't believe we understand it and don't walk in it as we should as, as believers. Now, that doesn't mean that, you know, and there are some who will take this kingdom dominion and they will say, well, if I have, I have kingdom dominion and kingdom authority, then only good things are going to happen and bad things aren't. Well, you know, that's not exactly true kingdom authority. I do believe in exerting your kingdom authority, but we are living in an earthly world. So it doesn't exempt us from going through some of the issues that we're faced in this life it simply means that we have to face it we need to learn how to face it with our kingdom authority and dominion not in our strength or our understanding because you know what most of the time we try to work things out our way it's it's not abnormal it's it's part of the human condition in the fallen state abram tried to work out the the promise that god had given him Abram and Sarai tried to work it out, gave Hagar to Abram, had Ishmael, and they're still fighting today. They're still fighting today. That's, you know, the Middle East is a big family war. Most of them, are, and you know, if you, <laughs> I, I, one of the things I always uh, was interested in is how that, and I understand it now, but how that, when, whenever we get a new president, They'll, someone will trace his lineage back and he'll be related to some other presidents and they'll be related to some royalty in England. And Well, you know what? If you go far enough back, we're all related. That's worrying some of you. Uh, the truth is, if you go far enough back, we're all related because we all come from the same place. If you believe Scripture, if you believe the Bible. And so we have to understand that... <clears throat> Um, the, the, I lost my train of thought. It just went. Pew. Yeah, no, it was before that. I was that using that to to make a point, and I, yeah, I lost it. Uh, I don't know why. I'm only fifty eight. Um, it don't get any better. It doesn't get any better. I'm trying to stall so I can remember what I was gonna say, but it's not it's not working. 
And so uh, I'm going to just move forward. Okay? We're, we're all related, and that's a wonderful thing if you go far enough back. Um, and I don't know what point I was going to make with that. But that's okay. Oh, the, the war in the Middle East. Yeah. Trying to work things out yourself. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, <laughs> you were paying attention. <laughs> then he says, no, it's an accident. He uh, hey, I don't care. He got me back on track. And the track is this, that, you know, when we try to work things out ourselves, we usually make a big mess out of them. Because we're human. And so learning to live in kingdom dominion is walking in the, the authority and dominion of knowing that Christ we're in him and he's in control. And so I don't have to work things out. Not, not if the, the scripture is true. The, the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. If I'm living my life in kingdom, dominion, and authority, then I am allowing the scriptures to dictate, the spirit to dictate where I walk, when I walk, how I walk, and who I walk with. Okay, so in this passage of scripture in Matthew chapter 6, we see Jesus trying to teach his disciples and he's giving them, uh, if you will, a pattern, a way of praying because they don't, they, their prayers, the things they're learning with Jesus are different than what they were taught. They're different than the Jewish traditions because the traditions are that the scribes and the Pharisees will go stand on a street corner and they'll pray loud and most of the times they were paid to pray for somebody. They were doing it for money, not for spiritual reasons. And they were doing it to be seen or heard, not really trying to have a conversation with God. And Jesus was, he was trying to tell them, look, that's the wrong way to pray. This is the way you pray. You get alone. You talk to God. You pour out your heart to him. And he gave them a pattern in how to do that in what we call the Lord's Prayer. And so he was giving us something that we could, if you will, imitate. Not in a bad way. but in a way that would allow us to understand how to access God. Several years ago, I heard a, there was a, I, he was our pastor at the time, but he was uh, telling a story, and I remember this story. Because, you know, being Pentecostal, uh, you know, you, one of the things when I was growing up is there was one unpardonable sin, and that was blaspheming the Holy Ghost. And they never really explained what blaspheming the Holy Ghost was. So as a kid, I was always afraid that I might do something to blaspheme the Holy Ghost. I was afraid I was going to go straight to hell if I did that because it's unpardonable. It's in, the, in Scripture. It's, yeah, I, I can't be forgiven of that if you offend or blaspheme the Holy Ghost. And so uh, he was telling this story. And this woman in his church had come to him, and she was so worried and upset. And he said, "What, Sister, what is wrong with you? And she said, it's my children. She had tears in her eyes. She said, my kids... They're out in the backyard. We, we had a wonderful Pentecostal Holy Ghost service Sunday night. And on Monday morning, they're in the backyard and they're playing church. And they're acting like they're speaking in tongues. And I'm afraid they're blaspheming the Holy Ghost because they're not baptized in the Holy Spirit. And the pastor said, can I tell you something? They're imitating what they saw. Would you rather them imitate something that was bad or something that was godly. He said, don't, don't, don't be hard on them. Don't get on to them. Explain to them what's going on. So they have understanding. So they have desire to, to receive the real thing. I want to tell you, kids are imitators. You want to see a bad kid? Most of the time they had a bad example. Not always, but a lot of times. Not always. You want, to see, you want to see, do you want to see why uh, uh, we are in the position we're in as a society? Most of the time, it's because of absent fathers who aren't setting an example. Studies show in prisons, a lot of those inmates didn't grow up with a man in a house. I'm going to tell you something. You can't learn to be a man without a man to show you how to be a man. 
you've got to have a man to show you how to be a man. A woman, a young woman, in order for her to act like a young woman, needs an example. She needs to learn how to imitate. I'm going to take it a step further. The kids that are coming up in this church don't just need parents that act the right way. They need spiritual mothers and fathers that will show them the way. One of the worst things that a, a young person can see is a church of adults who are fighting. Oh, Lord Jesus. Who don't know how to get along. And then they're going to ask the question, why do I need God if they can't get along and they're the leaders of the church? You see, we as a people, we're, we're imitators. We, we do what we do many times because of what we see and hear and how it makes us feel. The other day I was, uh, you know, I like to sing. I really like to sing. And I, I don't think I need to be on a singing show or on a record or anything like that. But I think I can sing. I think I can carry tune. I, I think I'm capable. But the other day I was, I was singing. I was walking through the house. And I don't know, I, I'm going to say it was the television, but one of my grandkids, as I was walking through the house just singing, they were in the house and they were watching TV. And, and, and as I'm walking through the house, they went, Big Paul, no. I'm like, wait a minute. I know I'm on key. One of them said, I think you're singing the wrong words. I'm like, wait a minute. That's not what you're supposed to. You see, we want to set an example of how our kids and our grandkids should sing and worship and be. Jesus was setting an example for the disciples. This is how you pray. If you want to move mountains with your prayer, if you want to move mountains with your prayer, you've got to believe that he's going to hear you and that mountain's going to move. Now, can I just... I, that was also that that was all as it was coming out of my mouth it was a little contradictory because jesus didn't tell us to pray to god to move the mountain he said speak to the mountain but if you've not been in communion with him you're not going to have the faith to believe you can speak to that mountain now can i just say the mountains that are before us are looming large as a people as a society Not being political, not being uh, uh, <clears throat> on a, getting on a soapbox. We are faced with end, day, end of days decisions. We just are. And the question is this that I would ask you this, this evening. Are you prepared to stand for what is right and what is truth? Are you prepared to stand for... For what God said, not what pastor said, not what the church of God says, not your own opinion or desires, but what does the word of the Lord say? Are you prepared to stand on that? Again, prayer for kingdom living. Let me tell you something about kingdom living. The, the, the greatest example of kingdom living that you and I can have is Jesus Christ. And at the end of his earthly kingdom life, he died. He was offered up as a sacrifice. We know, yes, he was supposed to. That was his purpose. That's why he came. Absolutely, that is why he came. But if you look at the early church and the persecution that they went through from Rome and, and from the, the, the emperors, the rulers of Rome, they were put to death. They were tortured. They were the, the horrible things that they went through. Are we prepared for that? Now, this is not a, a, a class or a message that you and I necessarily want to hear. But again, th this is something that the Lord is putting in my heart. Don't think that the church that leaves this place. Now, I usually say this. 
I, I, this is what I usually say. I usually say I don't believe that the church is going to go out weaker than it was birthed. And I usually get shouts right there. Yeah, amen, praise the Lord. The church. Be... But the flip side of that is this. The persecution that the early church suffered is going to be comparable to the church that leaves in the rapture. My, my belief. And so it, I would be remiss if I didn't start preparing people for what I thought was coming. You believe we're going to the tribulation? No, I don't believe we're going through the seven-year tribulation. I believe the rapture of the church is going to take place before that. But do I believe we're going to be persecuted? You bet your bottom dollar I believe we are. And if you don't think we're in the end days, let me just tell you something. Right now, Congress has a bill that they're trying to push through for the president to sign that the government is informed by your bank Every transaction you make, every dime, dollar, penny you put in, and every penny, dime, dollar you pull out. If you don't think we're there, if you read Facebook, uh, one of our former uh, uh, administrative bishop's wives posted that she was in a large bank and she was talking to the branch manager, and the branch manager said this time or spring of next year, there'll be no more tellers in our bank. She said, how are we going to do business? And she said, by iPads. And she said, well, how are we going to get cash? And the woman told her, said, well, for now, there'll be cash available in the ATM, but that's going away. I'm going to a cashless society. Now, if that catch you, caught you off guard, you hadn't studied Revelations because that's where we're going. I love my new bank card. I got a new bank card. I bank here locally where the church does. I love my new bank card because all I got to do, I don't have to stick that thing in. I don't have to swipe it. I just got to tap it. But you know what's coming next? They're going to put it right here. So no one steals my card. Why are you talking about this? Because if we're going to be imitators, we need to be imitators, not of a, a movement or a denomination or a pastor. We need to be imitators of Jesus Christ, who had a way of connecting with God and hearing from His Father and knowing what to do, even if it meant walking down the road to Calvary. You see, we have this phraseology. And it's not really far disconnected from the church. It's this. And I'll ask leaders this sometimes. If you know, I, have a, I teach a CAMS class in the fall and the spring. And, and I, I supervise MIP students who are going through the ministerial internship program. And one of the things that I tell them is you have to decide what hill you're willing to die on. What hill is worth dying on. And what that means is, in, in a, if you will, a military sense, there are certain things that are worth fighting for and dying for, and there are other things that are not. And I'll just tell you, the paint on the walls, the, the carpet, the, whether you got pews or, or chairs or whatever, to me, that's not worth fighting and dying for. But there are some things that I will stand on that hill and I will not move and I will die if necessary because I'm not going to move. One of those things is I'm going to preach the truth. Whether you like it or someone else doesn't like it, it doesn't matter because I don't preach for you. I preach to you. I preach for Him. Amen. And He's called me to speak truth. And, and listen, while you clap if you want, but the truth is there's coming a day where they're going to challenge that. They're going to challenge what you say. And you've got to determine what hill you're willing to die for. I said this was not very uh, far removed from the Bible because Jesus had a hill he chose to die on. We call it Golgotha. We call it Calvary. But it was hill that he said is worth dying on. And it's the hill that buys back humanity. It redeems them. It purchased them back. So we have, to, we have to know who we're following and who we're imitating. We, we, while I look up, I have people in, in the faith in, in this way that I look up to and admire some of the things they've done and, and how they've been and the ministries they've had and the life they've lived. I look at people, and, but, but who I really truly want to imitate is not them while they've got a great life. I want, and Paul said, you know, follow me as I follow Christ. 
Uh, but I want to tell you something. If you have the Bible, you have the Holy Spirit, you ought to be following Jesus Christ. Amen. Now more than ever. Because while there's been a, a spirit of deception in the world, it's grown stronger. The deceptive spirit, and, and the Bible talks about it, that there's going to come a point, some people believe it's in the tribulation, some believe it's right before it, but they're going to believe a lie. They're not going to follow the truth. And I'm setting you right now, I'm warning you, you can't follow the truth if you don't know the truth. And you can't trust me or some other preacher to give you the truth. I will give you the truth to the best of my ability by the Holy Spirit, but you need to know the word of the living God for yourself. You need to know how to pray without calling the pastor, going to the pastor, or calling uh, Denise or some other leader in the church that you have confidence in. You need to know how to to connect with God by hitting your knees and opening your mouth and crying out to your God because He will hear and He will answer. Amen. Listen, I've been doing this for a long time. There's a lot of people who won't open their mouth on their own for their own self. They want someone else to pray for them. Well, I'll pray for you but only if you're praying for yourself as well. Well, that's, that's not kind. Really? How unkind is it of you not to believe in your own prayers to call out to God? Amen. What do you expect me to do on your behalf if you're not willing to make an effort on your own behalf? Right. We have been pampered as a church for much too long where we ought to have fit warriors for the kingdom warfare we've got babies who still suck in bottles but we got out of shape warriors that can't get up without someone else helping them it's the truth We want to be milk fed. I only want the sweet stuff. I only want the good stuff. I only want the easy stuff. I want the blessing stuff. Oh yeah, that's a wonderful thing. But there's something that comes with that blessing. Responsibility. And maturity. And the understanding to know what to do with that blessing. Because if it's just for you to consume, God ain't going to bless it. That's, that's not why God blesses us. God blesses us to be a blessing. God blesses us so He can work through us to reach other people for the kingdom. Amen. Amen. And so how are we doing that? See, we have, we have lost this, the, the, the idea or the understanding of how do I live a kingdom life? How do I pray kingdom prayers? How do I walk kingdom walk? How do I talk kingdom talk? Not... not the speech of this world and, and not the walk of this world, but the walk of Jesus Christ. Why do you think that Jesus called 12, wound up with 70? We're not told all of them, but he had 70 that he sent out. Wound up with 120 in the upper room, but they walked and they talked. And they lived and they moved with Jesus for three and a half years, or three and a third. There's different theologians think different amounts of time right there, that last year. The bottom line is they were learning how to be disciples. They were learning how to be Christians, Christ like. They didn't fully get it until the Holy Spirit was poured out. Because He came, the Bible says, He came so that they could be a witness. 
He's going to empower you so that you can be a witness for me, Jesus said. What does that mean? Well, if you truly understand it, I believe that it means to, to walk like Christ walked. To talk not as an imitator. We're not talking about we need a bunch of Christian rich littles. Some of you don't know who he is. We got a corner over here we'll open up for you after service. <laughs> He's not looking for people who can just mimic him. He's looking for people who will walk and talk and move and function as his hands and his feet and his heart and his, the body of Christ. That's who we are. We're going to be the body of Christ. We need to be the body of Christ and do the work of Christ. And that doesn't excuse anybody for any reason. Amen. Prayer for kingdom living. You think I've got off topic. No, this is just my introduction. Prayer for kingdom living. So what would prayer for kingdom living be? If we look at Jesus and he tells us from, from verse uh, 5 through verse 11 10 or 11 he's telling them you know not not to be like these these not to be like these not to be but do that do it this way and then he gives them this prayer again we've talked about the lord's prayer or the disciples prayer whatever you want to call it we talked about it before but he gives them this pattern and he tells them listen if you'll pray this way and he says in this manner also In this manner. Again, he's teaching them kingdom dynamics, kingdom prayer, kingdom authority. If you want God to hear your prayer, pray like this. Now, I'm not saying every time you pray, you need to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You know, there's a different church that prays that way. And I'm not knocking them, but it can't be a ritual. It can't be a ritual. It's got to be something from the heart of the spirit of man. Father God, our Father, who art in heaven. You don't have to say it, King James Version. You know, I know some preachers are rolling over in a grave for me saying that, but you don't have to say it, King James Version. You just have to understand the concept that God, that Jesus was saying, look, if you want to pray and you want God to hear you and you want to, because they asked him, they said, teach us to pray. And one of the, the gospels, it's written down lord teach us to pray and this is what they he taught them he said go to your father your father our father who is in heaven you're a holy god you're a, you're a righteous god you're one there there are ways to say that without saying exactly the way you can say it that way but what he's really trying to get across is it's got to come from here not just here and here I'll give you a prime example Growing up in Texas high school football, I played high, Texas high school football. And before every game, our coach would tell us to get a knee or grab a knee. And we'd all get down fully dressed in our pads, our helmets beside us, because he wouldn't, didn't want us to have our hats on while we prayed. And he led us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, we all said it out loud. And then when we got done, he would, we would stand up and he said, then he had let out a few cuss words and tell us to go kill him. Yeah, yeah, I know. And I, I grew up in a Pentecostal home. I'm not saying I was living exactly right, but I knew, boy, that prayer didn't get through the ceiling. Because it was just a ritualistic event. That, that it wasn't really a prayer. I mean, how can you follow a prayer by saying, all right, let's go bad word, bad word, bad word, bad word, do this. Now, some would argue and say, well, you just need to be sanctified. I'm going, yeah, you really need to be sanctified. Maybe saved and baptized with the Holy Ghost and <laughs> delivered and a couple other things, you know. I don't know. I'm not judging him, but maybe I am. Lord, forgive me if I was. <laughs> I don't want to be, I don't want to stand in judgment of someone. But you understand what I'm saying? If we're going to pray a kingdom prayer, it's got to come from a place that we know that we are in right standing with God and that he's hearing us. And that he cares about us. And that he loves us. And that when we pray, it's going to make a difference.
Now, I'll just tell you, when we opened with prayer, we started our service with prayer, and we were praying for our leadership. As we was praying for our leadership, some of the things I was saying, in my, my heart, I was saying, now, Lord, I'm saying this, and I know you've got certain things that have to take place, but God, I, I'm not going to stop crying out for my nation and my country and my people. You, you've told me to do this. And so I'm going to cry out for them, but I'm expecting you to do something too. I'm going to do my part. I'm going to speak truth. I'm going to, I'm going to win, and I'm not being political, but I'm going to vote for what I believe is truth. But God, you're, going, you're the only one that can turn the hearts. I can't turn somebody's heart. Only you can, God. You're the only one that is able to do that. And God, I'm calling on you. And I'm asking you to do that in the name of Jesus Christ. It looks like a mountain, but I'm going to speak to that mountain. And I'm going to say in the name of Jesus, you have to be removed. Because I believe this nation was raised up by God. Amen. And founded on the principles given by God. Do I think we've been perfect? No, we've got some major flaws. But the bottom line is, I challenge you to find a better place. That, and I'm not talking about economically and politically. I'm talking about that has spread more of the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. I don't know of another country that has sent more people around the globe with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Sent for more people, more money, more Bibles, more whatever. I'm not being prideful or tooting our horn. I'm simply saying we have been a nation that recognized who God was. And we have shared that gospel message. And now I believe we're in danger of being one of those nations that for, has forgotten God. And I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that for the rest of my life. I don't want to see that for my sons and my daughter. I don't want to see that for my grandchildren. Right. I don't want to see that. I can't stop prophecy. And I don't know where the United States is in end time prophecy. I know what I think, but you, it's really hard. It's really vague concerning us. But I'm going to tell you. I'm going down fighting. Right. I'm talking about kingdom fighting. I'm not talking about worldly fighting. I'm going down fighting. I'm going down declaring the gospel of Jesus Christ. If I got to go down, and this nation's got to go down, I'm not going to be one of the ones that keeps their mouth shut and doesn't speak with boldness the truth of God's word. And you shouldn't either. We need to declare the hills that we're willing to fight for and die on, if necessary. It's part of our kingdom. It's part of who we are. I'm going to ask you to stand. Heavenly Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your truth. I thank you, God, for your, under, your loving kindness. Thank you. God, for all that you're doing, God. I pray, Lord, that we are a people who will know how to call out to you, how to walk out this life for you, how to live according to your purpose and your truth. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, God, for your will to be done done in our life your purpose to be fulfilled yes, as we go out into this world to share the message of the gospel of jesus christ in his name we pray and the church said amen. amen and amen god bless you thank you for being here don't forget that, that our team leaders meeting is sunday after service i need to see uh connie story Ann and marvin brooks uh david and carolyn perkins and penny jeff and cassie if you guys come sit up here at the front real quick i promise to i will uh, i will do my best not to keep you too long
pastor baptized his daughter in a public setting, and he's getting off the plane, and they were waiting for him. He's uh, from Canada, and they arrested him. They got off the plane here in Texas. Oh, wow. And the bottom, the bottom.